Hey everybody, it's Citrus. I recently reached a rather large milestone, so I figured I would give you guys a rather large project of mine. I've been working on this for about a week now, and I think it's ready to show. This is Flipper. It's a fully capable Robo Dolphin storage. I'm sure you saw that in the title, but Robo Dolphin. What's the point? I figure we should start from the very beginning. Why are storages so slow? I've got a mock up of a storage system where I store just a couple items here along with some test inventories. Now, if I want to sort just this box, that's fine. I can unload this box at the speed of a single hopper, which is 9,000 items per hour, and it will empty into this chest just fine. Now, what if I wanted to start sorting too? You see, we start running into issues. This is faster than a single hopper now, but the emerald slice here only has a single hopper to keep up with. So now it's missing items. And because of this, we can't exactly just dump a whole bunch of items in there. We'll run into the same problem. You see, the hoppers all picked up items, but they've reached their limit. They can only move those 9,000 items per hour, but they also can't pick up all 9,000 of those items at once. So I would have lost all of these items. Now, I could send this around in a circle again, but we run into another issue. Items despawn after five minutes. My solution to this is a robo-dolphin. Now, this is something I built with Kairu about a week ago. And it solves the issue of everything we just talked about. I can, in fact, just dump hundreds of items in and it will work. It will work faster than single hopper speed. And I'll show how. If I throw a box in, it'll start up and it'll start placing mine carts. You can see my entity counter in the top right going up. When it places those mine carts, it'll push them forward. It'll unload this box very fast, as you can see. And then it'll just throw those items out. It uses something called a minecart eater, which I had to design a new one with Kairu. Uh, well, this originally the concept was by Kairu. It was improved for this. And now what we did is we just fed it into the back as well. Uh, to allow more than that single hopper speed of items, and you can see there's items flowing into all of these, and I'm going to need to put more in here because it's just too fast. Let it unload a box. can see all these turn on. There we go. So now there's items filtering into all of these chests at once, and that of course means that we're moving four times faster than a single hopper could unload a chest. And it just works. We run into no issues with despawn timing, because look, those items all got picked up, and they'll get spit right back out the other side. Even though I'm not unloading a box, these items will still all get picked up. Uh, and I feed them into the back here just to throttle it if it gets full. So if there's more items than the machine can handle coming into the rear, then it won't ever unload a box because the second stage of minecarts will always be full. Now, as we've been talking, we've sorted a few hundred items. I couldn't say the same about any other type of storage system. Uh, you may also be wondering why it's called a robo-dolphin. Uh, this 
was a concept taken from, oh, I first saw it, in a cubic meter video. Really, I know, but it was a good concept. I used dolphins to reset the despawn timer of items. In Java Edition, dolphins play with items, and that resets their despawn timer. It's just like if a player picked them up and threw them. We don't have that luxury here on Bedrock Edition, so we had to come up with a more creative solution. I like this one better anyways. Now, if I wait a bit for it to be done with all the items that it was sorting, you'll see it slowly counts down on this clock. And that's because it's run out of items. The items here reset this clock. And when it reaches a certain threshold, it will stop powering this clock, which is the clock that dispenses the cards here. You should be seeing that any time now. We're on signal strength four, and there it stops. It's no longer powering this these dispensers, so all of the carts can filter back into the chest. And there goes the last carts into the hopper. It will cycle one more time and be over. And there we go. Turns itself off. This clock is no longer going. No carts are out. And the pistons aren't firing. Now, unfortunately, I can't just slap this Robo Dolphin onto any storage system. And I believe Kyrie is working on something to solve that. But in the meantime, I've had to redesign a chest hall. Now, this is my chest hall, the my Okta SS2. And it's a pretty good haul, but it needs extra things. Uh, you may have realized that it's an issue if items that go around in a circle will never, ever, ever despawn, because how do you know if something isn't sorted? There's more than 256 items in the game. So what I do, and this is something Cubic did in his video as well, is I have a monostable attached to every single filter. Now, why are these monostables important? Since they're attached to each filter, I can use them to know if there are any items going through the storage system that are sorted. And now I can go over to Flipper itself. They're all connected together by this line. And they go into this extended comparator clock. And this will be up to signal strength 15 whenever anything is sorted. And when it runs out, it will divert the items. Instead of going back to the chest hall to be sorted again, the items will go out and around and up into this. This is a non-stackable separator made by Firebee. And it will separate these non-stackables it will separate any non-stackable in the storage out to a separate storage. And then any of the non-sorted items, and again, we know these aren't sorted because of the fact that there's no filters going on. But we'll store these non-sorted items into these chests. You can see that I've tested this storage enough that these chests are pretty full. Now, these are all observerless monostables, so it doesn't look like it's just monostables, but I've had to stagger them. Uh, this is what a single slice looks like. You'll see the left and right halves are different. Uh, and every time you tile it forward, you flip it horizontally. So this side would be on that side, and that side will be on that side, so that they don't interfere. I've got it here with two right next to each other. These, bo these halves both do the exact same thing. But they don't interfere. And now this SS2 is important because it allows us to pick up a full stack of items, pretty much. 63 items at once. So when the items do flow over, it will grab as many as it can, which 
isn't true for the filters that I've used over there. I should probably show it's working. I've got four test boxes here. We won't sit around for it to sort all of it, but this will be a good enough test. Got the input. Got a lever that lets you not start it if you don't want to. Drop it in there. And here's the Robo Dolphin. It's just at the bottom of the storage. It's got the output of all the chest dolls that we've placed in our first box. Because of all the item types, it's not going to unload the whole box at once. There we go. We'll break the box. Oh, and now we can see the items going up. And they go up. And now not all of these items are sorted, so we won't see them all get picked up. But cobblestone here is in bulk. You can see that happening. Cobblestone is sorted, sent to pulse out through the filter, and down to this clock here. There, something was sorted in a filter. If I go down here, I believe it was jungle leaves. Yep, see, we are now receiving jungle leaves. And the cobblestone that we got filtered into, this is a hybrid. So once this chest fills up, it will start filling shulkers of that item to store it at uh, 27 times efficiency. Here we can see the items looping. Now again, this is just the output from the rear of the, the chest hall. All of these items have gone over every filter. Um, we're at the point where most of these aren't sorted anymore. But there's still a couple sorted items. We saw Podzle. That's feeding in. There may have been dirt. No, it was coarse dirt. We're getting coarse dirt. We should still be getting jungle leaves. There they are. Now I'm going to let these all sort out and I will come back when all the filters are done and I will show you the uh, redirection into overflow. I believe we are now at the point where there are no more items left to sort in the chest hall. So this clock is counting down. Where it went down from 13 to 12 and now, all we have to do is give it some time. And there it just turned off. Alright. Now any new items, you'll see, should be redirected into overflow. Now, of course, we've got to wait until that happens. There we go. I can follow these items as they go up. And into these hoppers. Now, of course, just like every other system, it unlocks dynamically. We'll see these hoppers didn't unlock until they were ready. And it's sorting through these items for any non-stockables. We don't have any non-stockables, so I'll throw some in artificially. About some beds. There we go. And all these items are getting dropped into their respective hoppers. And as soon as these items stop flowing in, which should happen anytime soon, I'll just stop it artificially. You'll see they stop activating that uh, pressure plate. And these hoppers should lock. There we go. And now, Flipper is officially done sorting all those boxes that I inputted. Now that didn't take much more than a few minutes. Now of course there will be a world download for this, which I'll show you how to get in a moment. But, uh, there are some more complex things that I'd like to show you how to set up. The first of which being how to set up the filters. Uh, now there's two different types of filters on this chest hall. 
The first one is your normal filter. That's the easiest to set up. There you just take some items, rename them. I'll call this one filter one, and I'll do another one for good measure. And you need just a single one of the item you want to sort. And you go into the hopper and grab 20 of your named items, and then put exactly one of what you want to sort in there. Now, if I drop an item that isn't diamond blocks in there, won't pick it up. But if I do drop my diamond blocks, it'll pick them all up at once there. You saw that was an entire stack. And put them into the chest. Now the other type here is a push filter. Push filters are set up a little bit differently. And you're going to need a different named item. I'll call this filter 2. And set up this hopper first. You want four, one in each slot, the last four slots here, of that second named item. And then a stack, a stack, a full stack of the item you want to sort. In the first hopper, it's the same as the others. Just take, well, not exactly the same. You want to take 19, not 20, of your first filler item and a single of the item you want to sort. Now if I grab some more lapis, try to sort my anvil. <laughs> I believe it went into this one. It did. <laughs> well, if I try to sort an anvil on that hopper, it's not going to work. But if I throw lapis, it's going to pick up a whole stack and move into this chest just fine. And that's how you set up the filters. Now that's the same setup between this filter and this filter. They are both push filters. And the rest of the six are all set up exactly like this one. You can do all of these exactly the same. The top hopper is the one that matters. The rest of them you don't have to touch. The next more complex part to set up in Flipper is the Robo Dolphin. Now this has got a good number of inventories you need to pre-fill. The first of which is this dropper latch here. These are facing into each other, and the dropper here on the right below the torch needs to have a single item in it. It doesn't matter what type of item, I've used bamboo here because it's cheap. Next is this barrel down here. This barrel is right behind this comparator, the first block of the water stream below the eater. It needs to contain 26 unstackable items. Uh, I would use wooden shovels for this. It's the cheapest unstackable. Certainly do not use diamond hose. The next is the hopper minecarts. One in this dispenser, and the rest of these inventories here See all these hoppers, that dropper down there, and this chest, along with this hopper and this hopper, are all full with hopper minecarts. And it needs to be that many. Otherwise, your Robo Dolphin will be slower. It will work with less hopper minecarts, but of course, it will be slower. And you can just do that by throwing items into this water stream. The next complex part of the Robo Dolphin is this composter. This composter needs to contain a fill level of four, which you can see if you break this repeater. And the last more complicated part here is the water stream. Once you place the water here, it will most likely at some point flow over into the soul soil, uh, especially if you don't have this blocked off. All you need to do there is make sure you have the end rod and the repeater placed 
directly down there. Place a block there to block that water flow. And break it. The water shouldn't flow back in, and you should be good to relight your fire. Now besides all the parts of the Robo Dolphin that I just talked about, there's a couple places in Flipper that need some specific pre-fill. The first is here. This dropper needs to contain a single item to power this piston. This is down in the manual box display. I go up and around. These dispensers up here all need to contain a water bucket, and the empty box storage needs to be filled with shulker boxes. Uh, I don't recommend filling this entirely with shulker boxes, but at least a couple chests should do, enough to make sure that you can access at least a few of these. This storage up here, the empty box storage, also resupplies the hybrid with empty boxes. And the hybrid needs to have 14 boxes per slice here. These filters up here are set up the same way as the top filters, the top six filters for the chest hall. And you don't have to worry about any pre-fill for any of these other hoppers. To work this manual box display here in the center, all you need to do is throw a box in, put whatever you want inside, and break it with the button. Sometimes the hopper will pick the box back up, but you just have to push the button again. You'll pick it up just fine. If you've made it this far into the video, thank you so much. The world download for this will be in Hive Tech Archives and also in BST. It might also be in Notion at some point. The link to Hive Tech will be in the description. That's probably the easiest place to find the world download for this. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.